Live from Studio 46 of the Citrix Broadcast System, it's Tech Talks To Go. I'm your host, Sean Donahue. Tech Talks To Go is a condensed conversational style series that features industry leaders and subject matter experts. The topics we cover are designed for you and by you, our viewing audience. On today's episode, we have Ron Oglesby from Unidesk. So please help me welcome to the virtual stage, Ron Oglesby. All right, welcome back, Ron Oglesby, to the show. Thanks, Ron, for coming back. Yeah, you bet. Well, we've got unfinished business. Uh, that we do. And like I said, hopefully we'll have several episodes uh, of this. Um, Last time you were on, we talked about an overview of Citrix app layering, what was Unidesk uh, app yep. layering. And today what we wanted to do is we really wanted to roll up those sleeves, as you can see, I'm doing so here, and get into uh, the first, maybe the first step in an app layering pr uh, rollout, mm -hmm. which is the packaging of app layering. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Can you describe to us a little bit what the packaging process is, why we do it, uh, kind of the fundamentals of packaging? Yeah, sure. The, um, you know, the, the very beginning, kind of the first step, someone downloads uh, the app layering uh, virtual appliance. And let's go ahead and let's... let's yeah, I'm uh, going to make you the presenter here so you can share some no, slides. No, that's, that's awesome. Slide where. Uh, you know, we always talk about app layering and people always think about apps. And that's where obviously a lot of the work uh, begins is, is apps, right? The first thing they do is they import an operating system, right? They make an operating system layer. Uh, and in my case, I have Windows 10 and Windows 2012. And this is just, they build an OS as a VM and it gets imported. But that's where the work really starts, right? I mean, the, the operating system is simple. It's when you, you know, I have Windows Server, but I have 500 apps. You know, that's right. where a lot of the stuff's going to go down. And so when we look at our apps, and, and it's actually a fairly simple process, um, you create a new layer inside of the interface. You click that create a new layer wizard. And what really happens is a, two things. A disk is created. If it's not already been created once, it's, it's created. And mm -hmm. it's the bottom disk you see here, that blue read-only volume. This is the operating system that you selected. Okay. I'm building my app on Windows 2012 and any prerequisite layer. So if I'm installing uh, Office for the first time, I probably don't have any prerequisites. Or if I'm installing Adobe Reader, I probably don't have any prerequisites. It's, those apps are pretty standalone. But if I'm installing an Office plugin, right, something that, that needs to see Office while it installs, we can also select Office as a prerequisite so that that packaging machine has everything that those new apps need. Okay, but the let big, me pause yeah, yeah. right there, Ron, if I could. Uh, a couple of questions spring up. Number one, does the Windows operating system you select here uh, is it a dependency? Can I do I have to package on every OS? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a dependency. Now, uh, you'll hear a lot of people in layering go, "Oh, you can use you know the app you make on Windows 7 on you know 2008 R2, or or they'll tell you the app you make on on Windows 10 you can use on Server 2016." Uh, and they're right for some apps, right? I mean, if I do WinRAR, the install probably doesn't change that much between Win 10 and and uh, right. Uh, server 2012 or ser server 2016. The reality is, is that a large percentage of apps fail when you do that. That's why when you get into the, their marketing says, go ahead and do it. But when you read all the admin guides and you really talk to the engineers that work with these products, they go, yeah, don't do that. Right. They, yeah. they have little lines in their admin guides that no, you should use the same operating system and, and whatnot. So we actually put in guardrails. We call them software guardrails that when I make something on 2012, it's for 2012. When I make something on Win 10, it's for Win 10. Uh, so yes, it, is, it does become a dependency, if you will, for that application layer. Okay, and as an admin, am I going to be notified that, hey, this was packaged on 2012 or this was uh, packaged oh, on Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. If, if uh, th those guardrails are all built in so that if I go to try to assign uh, you know, QuickBooks that was made on Windows 7 to a 2016 server OS, like I'm building an image, a layered image, it won't even yeah. show it to you. It won't even oh, show yeah. those apps to you. And if I go to log in, here's a, here's a really interesting thing. Let's say I'm Ron, the user, the Active Directory user, and I've been assigned 
and Elastic apps, those hot ad apps, and some of them were built on Win 7 and some of them were built on Server 2016. When I log into a 2016 server, yes, I'll get the ones for 2016, but it will not connect the Windows 7 ones. When I log into my Windows 7 desktop, it'll only connect the Windows 7 apps. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So what the, what happens here is essentially this uh, packaging machine, installation machine, is a virtual machine running in your target environment. Could be Zen Server or, or vSphere or Nutanix AHV or Azure or whatever. Uh, you specify it in the connector, and when you create a new layer, you say, hey, I want to do a new layer, here's its name, here's the operating system I'm, I'm going to use, and it essentially a attaches two disks to that virtual machine. One is read-only, and it could be just the OS layer, or maybe it's the OS layer and some prerequisite layers, and the other is a read-write volume, and that's where the new layer is going to reside, and it boots the machine up. That's it. You don't you don't log into a machine and then start software or anything. It actually boots the machine up and it just sits there and waits for you to log in and install the app. Okay. The admin installs the app, either you know, downloads it from the internet or runs it from a share, or maybe has a an MSI somewhere that's already silent install and he just executes it and goes through whatever process they go through. If it's reboots, if it's, you know, oh I have to install this app and then I install these three plugins, you do all that and then you finalize the layer, you shut down, and there's an actual icon on the desktop that shuts down the machine and actually does checks and makes sure that there's no outstanding file copies. It makes sure that uh, the .NET process is NGEN is finished, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That makes the layer. So any on exit or reboots that the app would lay down are going to be captured as well. Yeah, it actually, you know, it'll, it'll awesome. that little finalize, that little shutdown that's an icon on the desktop actually checks, hey, there's pending reboots, there's pending file overwrites, there's, and it'll tell the, the admin that's doing it, nope, don't shut down yet, this machine is waiting for a reboot. Okay, so I'll reboot, let it reboot, let it do its thing, and then I'll run that little process on the desktop again, and it'll check again. Yeah, yeah, because some apps lay down something on the first boot that need to be captured. Exactly. On exit, okay. Exactly. Now, the, the other thing I wanted to point out was, we get asked a lot, what happens with app versions, right? I, I installed QuickBooks, I installed Office. You know, Office is a common one because it has so many security fixes and stuff that comes out, but it could be QuickBooks gets a patch or whatever. Uh, what happens to that layer I already built? Do I have to go build a new layer? No, you can actually select that layer in our interface and say, you know, click add a version. And what it does in that case is instead of being an empty uh, virtual disk for a new layer like it was when I'm creating a layer, it actually copies the existing layer, attaches it to that same installation machine setup that you, you know, that we were just talking about, and marks it as read-write. So you log in and you see the app that you're updating and you can yep. make your changes. Maybe you just needed to change a registry value or maybe you had to yep. run a whole update. Whatever it is, that existing layer is now uh, copied for a new version. And so you apply the patch or the update or the reg modification, whatever it happens to be. Exactly. And then you like almost like save it as a, a branched off. Yeah, it's, it's essentially a linear set of versions so that, okay. you know, I'm on version one and I, I update to version two. Uh, we leave the old one in place because people might still be using it or, you know, right. you have to have rollback or whatever. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's a duplicate of the, existing, of the existing layer that you're working on. And somebody logs in a new, start, launches a new session, they get the updates. As long as they've been assigned the latest version, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I would like to thank my special guest today, Ron Oglesby, on part one of the Citrix app layering packaging episodes of Tech Talk To Go. Tune in for episode two, when Ron will actually do a live demo of the app layering packager. But for now, subscribe to this channel. It's right here on the screen. Read the blogs at citrix.com forward slash blogs. Don't forget to attend the master classes. They are available on the Citrix YouTube channel. Follow hashtag Citrix Tech on Twitter. Sign up. And once you subscribe, you'll get emails about future episodes. And don't forget to leave your comments below with suggested topics or even questions on today's topic. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Tech Talks To Go.